What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Trail Makers and today I've built something that is a little bit ridiculous but it was a legitimate thing that existed supposedly back in the day and that is this wonderful amphibious plane here. It is the Dornier DOX which was apparently an amphibious plane built way back in the day when safety standards weren't exactly a thing. And originally I wanted to build the Canadian Spruce Goose, which was actually the Hercules H4, I believe. It was this big wooden plane, hence why it was called the Spruce Goose, and it had eight engines on it. But I was looking at pictures of it, and it wasn't really that exciting. I mean, it was just, it kind of looked like a big plane with like a boat hull. I mean, it really was just sort of like a standard old giant cargo plane. But then I came across a picture of this, the Dornier DOX, or the flying boat. And it looked ridiculous. I mean, we've got the cab on top. It's got 12 propeller engines for some reason, as if that was an intelligent idea. And since I hadn't ever built an amphibious plane in Trailmakers, I figured I would give it a try with this ridiculous project. And oh my goodness, this project really pushed my design skills to the limit. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I had to do in this plane that wasn't exactly realistic to real life, but it does fly, it does work, and it can take off off water. And of course, I haven't taken it to the high seas yet, so I'm super excited to try that. But you can see here, we've got 12 propellers on the top. We've got sort of this weird boat hull shaped thing. It actually took me for Forever to get the hull in the way I like it and then you'll notice some little sneaky things like those extra propellers there as well as when we fire it up there are some thrusters inside because surprise surprise 12 propellers and trail makers doesn't create enough power to actually fly this plane but we can take off no problem we've got full controls you know we've got left and right yaw we've got pitch and we've got roll and oh my god there's a barrel in the runway yeah we just okay yeah no that I should have seen that coming all right we lost half a wing it really is a flying brick. You can see we've got double wheeled landing gear just to give us enough freaking clearance. And actually, we have to get up to about 200 kilometers an hour. There we go. And then we can slam it to pitch up and perfect. We are off the ground. And then, of course, we have to dodge this wonderful giant pillar they put at the end of the runway. But you can see it's a wonderful plane. It flies quite nicely. And so we're actually flying with, uh, you know, the thrusters inside as well as all the propellers. The six propellers on the back are actually going in reverse to push us forward. And of course, the six on the front are bringing us forward. And it kind of wants to pitch down because it has a lot of thrust above the center of lift, which I guess in real life they would have just dealt with and just had it. I know in the real life pictures of the plane, if you look at a side view of it, the wings are sort of angled up a bit, which I feel like would have helped counter that pull down from the thrust, but it flies pretty good. I mean, this plane is at the limit of complexity. I know I could use mods to increase that limit. Uh, this is literally like a 700 complexity or 696 or something. It is right up there. And it's got obviously a lot of floats. There's more floats inside of it. In fact, the entire inside of the body, you can see some of them there, is filled with floats as well as thrusters and all sorts of fun stuff. But we can land relatively smoothly on the water, I hope. Uh, sometimes if you hit it too hard, you just kind of belly flop there you just gotta like drag the there we go yeah perfect you can see so we can land on the water and of course uh mine doesn't exactly float as well as the one in real life it is a very very heavy brick you can see i've even got some floats on the tail to prevent the tail from sinking and then of course we've got those underwater propellers but if we hammer it full throttle and we pitch up eventually we can get enough speed and just lift off look at that perfect lift off the water so not exactly the way they would have done it in real life i tried this originally without any propellers on it and when i did that i actually couldn't get it to lift off the water at all i could only get it going like 60 70 kilometers an hour on the water and you need a good 150 160 170 to actually take off and so i was actually talking with Moombo, and i was like well i spent like three hours building this amphibious plane and it doesn't work and he's like bro just throw some underwater engines on it and sure enough it works great but really really cool project and of course i want to take it on the high seas but i've just really been enjoying flying this thing around and it is the first amphibious oh come on there we go yeah the first amphibious plane i've ever built in trailmakers but it's kind of awesome i mean we could sort of use it as a submarine i guess if we no no see it it does have a fair amount of buoyancy look at that just bounced right out now, obviously, with jet engines, I feel like I'm a little bit more maneuverable uh, than the real plane was. But, unfortunately, without jet engines, this thing just flat up wouldn't fly. And, in fact, when I originally built it, I had all the propellers on the top and no engines inside of it. 
and the thrust from the top was so high it just ended up pulling the nose of the plane down constantly like the whole plane just wanted to pitch forward and you can see it's kind of doing that now we pretty much have to always constantly correct for it as long as we have the engines on but let's bring this thing in for a landing let's actually let's go back to the aircraft carrier and we can land it on that hopefully without taking too much damage and then we're going to go to the high seas and see how this thing does with wind and waves i'm assuming with the wind that you know it's 60 kilometer an hour wind we can do 230 you know i feel like we shouldn't have any issue right we're just going to go like net 180 forward or whatever right but we'll see how this goes and of course landing in the waves might be interesting i might still go back and make the spruce goose as well but you know like i said it just looked like a much less ex oh god there's no way there's no way oh we broke something yeah i know we, we overshot that oh yeah no what did we break must not have been that important we're still flying no problem all right let's turn around of course you can see we do have everything double winged um you know needed to really have a ton of lift with this thing it is a brick and a half and i guess the real one would have been a passenger plane not a cargo plane whereas the spruce goose would have been okay yeah no that perfect yeah the spruce goose would have been more of a uh more of a cargo plane i guess or a military transport anyway let's go quickly jump into the high seas and see what this plane can do i don't even know if there's a runway in the high seas all right here we are in the high seas let's spawn in our plane so as you can see 74 power cores just to get this thing to go and once it loads up we'll see how complex it is 694 just like right at the limit um so yeah 74 power cores the cockpit's actually hidden but if you can see it's kind of hard to tell it's an airplane cockpit but i actually put it inside the front glass piece of the plane so you can see there is this front sort of glass cab that would have existed and you can kind of see the bubble right through there so if you do want to fly in first person it's theoretically possible although i would not advise it because this thing is is quite literally a brick so anyway let's um get on the orbit camera here and there isn't really a runway so we're just gonna sort of coast it into the water i guess there we go i hit something okay that's not good hit a log let me just there we go perfect let's just take off here we're taking off into the wind which is always or no, we're taking off, yeah, into the wind, right? No, away from the wind. No, that's bad. See, that's why we can't take off here. You know what? We'll just hit a wave, and, like, it'll just lip us up. Perfect. Yeah, we're taking off with the wind there, which is really, really, really bad. You want to take off into the wind, creates maximum lift. You know, it's the airspeed across your propellers. Oh, my God, there's a green island there. Never been there before. This is actually sick, though. Once you're up, you don't even notice the wind. It's amazing. We're doing 289 kilometers an hour! There's the giant pit. Oh my god, the mouth of something. Apparently that's a reference to some movie that I just I just have never seen or something. That's awesome though. Giant pit of doom. Back towards the blue. You know what? Oh, there's some of those whales. See, I wanted a plane in this because I figured exploring the high seas with a plane would just be the way to go. And of course, it has to be an amphibious plane. I do want to try making some smaller amphibious planes. This one's obviously, it's a brick. It's massive. But it still was just a really, really fun project. It took me like literally three, four hours to, to build this. And the hardest part for me was getting the shape correct. I'm not very good at building, you know, block-based shapes. Like turning blocks into something that's smooth looking, which is really what this is. But it actually worked out quite well. It just took a long, long time to get it. And of course, it creates a whole ton of complexity having all those slopes and stuff at the back. Look at the size of these waves. That's insane. They just, like, completely drown that island. There's artifacts on this island, too. Do you see that? There are these red artifacts. Yeah. Clearly, I have to pick those up at some point. Probably need a helicopter to get those. That would be easy. Although a helicopter would have issues dealing with the wind. You can see the wind throws us like crazy. Like we just did a really, really tight hairpin. And that's because the wind is pushing us. But we're constantly able to keep lift because it's, you know, it's a 60 kilometer an hour wind or whatever. You're driving into it. You know, we're only doing 170 now, but the wind speed across our wings would be 170 plus 70 or whatever. So it'd be crazy fast. Holy, look at this wave. Dude, those are massive waves. What? Oh my god, it's so weird. It doesn't feel like we're even moving. Oh, it's because the wind is like 200 kilometers an hour. 
We aren't moving. What? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, chill, chill, chill. Are we like on the edge of the map? We must be at the edge of the map. It's actually like we're only doing 40 km an hour forward. This is so cool. This is like when you see those birds and you're, it's like a really windy day out and you see a bird and it's just not even moving. That's literally what we're doing right now. 26 km an hour, 230 km an hour wind. Oh my, this must be the edge of the map, right? I'm gonna, can I, is there a way for me to check? If I press, yeah, this is the edge of the map. Look at that. So when you get to the edge of the map, the wind just gets so aggressive you can't move. This is awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh man, this is nuts. All right, let's turn around. Look at this. Look, we go up, and look at how much it's gonna blow us instantly. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. We gotta turn. Yeah. I feel like this plane would not do this in real life. There we go. And now we're just flying. 300 kilometer an hour plus. That's so cool. Well, that's that's amazing. I never expected that to work in Trailmakers. This is actually the coolest thing I could have done. I, as long as I put like a magnet on this, which I don't have the complexity for anymore. But if we could have put a magnet on this, it would be amazing. Pick up some stuff. Although it'd be really hard to line up. There's no reverse on these thrusters. It's literally hold space to go forward with everything. I didn't bother putting a reverse. I probably should. Oh man, these these waves are so cool. I mean, these are like tsunami level waves though. Like, look at the size of this thing. That would swamp that island. It, oh, heartbeat. Just skim it a little bit. That's cool. Yeah, just touch it with the tail. It's fine. Woo! nice looking island. I don't see anything you have to pick up on this. Obviously, you, oh no, there is a there's a green thing up there. These are all like honestly, these would be so easy to explore with a helicopter. If we had a helicopter with a magnet on it that could, you know, deal with the wind because the wind is obviously like, look at this. Look at the amount the wind pushes us. That's pushing us to the right now. I'm I'm using the tail to sort of turn into it, but like look at that. We're going forward but diagonally just because of the wind speed. Okay, now we're lost. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Where are we? Oh, what is that? Oh, those are those giant um, mushroom coral things. I wonder if I press... Oh, I see. If I go to the map, it pauses. That is very convenient. It completely pauses what we're doing. I was wondering why I wasn't able... Whoa. Oh, it's an arctic biome. Another green thing there to pick up at some point. Interesting. There's like an arctic observatory or something. All right, here we go. Coming for a landing right on this smooth little ice flow. Yeah, just... Landing into the wind. Oh, God. You know what? Yeah. Good enough. Good enough. Oh, I see. This is the yellow delivery spot for the artifact. You probably have to do... Like submarine stuff. This looks like honestly like a moon pool where you're supposed to go down and do submarine things. Oh, that's cool. Well, let's see if we can actually get our plane back now. Um, by repair. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Let's get out of here. Should be good. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I guess that one's yellow, too. This is awesome. I gotta really build, like, some submarines. I gotta build a helicopter for sure. Man, the one thing I really like about Trailmakers as a game, and I really wish more games had it, is the, the aerodynamics and the water physics are just fantastic. And, you know, the buoyancy and drag and all that, like, it makes a difference. When you're building a plane like this, you have to actually look at the aerodynamic forces and where it's gonna give you drag and try and reduce that as much as possible. And, you know, it's just, it makes all your designs so much more rewarding. Like, this looks really easy. It's a plane, it flies, you got engines on it, great. But actually getting a plane that flies stable and has the right position of the wings and the right position of the thrusters and stuff, it actually takes a lot of effort in a game like this. You can't just place them wherever and hope it's going to work. And, you know, that just it makes it so much more rewarding when you actually get something that does work. Look at that. We need to build a car, too. Look, there's like a path that goes around that mountain with some jumps. I feel like a helicopter is really just a game exploit, though. It just completely... Oh, look, there's like a refinery dock area down there. We deliver all the red things. I just want to fly up above the volcano and see what's up. Oh, yeah, it's just, just full of magma, I guess. That's so cool. But yeah, it's really, it's really rewarding when you make something that actually works in a game that has the full physics. And then, of course, with the, these waves and stuff, I mean, 
it's just crazy. Like, we can come down here, you know, hit the... Oh, no, we can't hit the wave, apparently. Like, we can just, we can just hit that wave, right? Oh, we're back up in the air. Look at that. The wind is actually pushing us backwards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, don't flip. Don't flip, whatever you do. Oh, God. The wave is so big. Okay, here we go. Here. No, 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 no. The, the wind flipped. Oh, no. Oh, the wind flipped it. Let's just repair. Perfect. 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 Up. And, oh my god. Look at that. It's got enough of a wave that it literally just lifts off. That's crazy. Before it even hits the wave. That's so awesome. Whoa. What the heck? I've never looked up before. That's the ship from the Trailmakers campaign. If you ever played the Trailmakers campaign, the original campaign, when you first get to the planet, you have to like collect these artifacts and stuff, and that's what unlocks your parts. And that ship there is the ship that explodes in the cutscene, I'm pretty sure, and ejects all the parts that you're then collecting. I've literally never looked up and seen that. That's so cool. It's actually easier to take off on uh, the high seas than it is <laughs> On uh, the regular water. I usually build these kind of things in the danger zone. Because holy that wave. Look at the size of that wave. But anyway, yeah. I usually build things in the danger zone. Because there's lots of water there. Lots of flat ground. And, um, you know, there's no waves and wind. So it's easy to test your creation. But in this, it's kind of awesome. Because the waves just completely lift you off. Like, look at this. This wave is, this is ridiculous. This is a huge tsunami level wave. I think we're getting to- oh my god, holy cow, I flared up a little bit. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I have some other planes I want to build and, you know, vehicles in general. I definitely am going to spend a lot of time making pretty much everything amphibious, just because the high seas is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I need to build more amphibious vehicles to test out on the high seas. But let me know what you guys think of this build in the comments down below. I was just- I'm really happy that it works. I'm glad that it works as a plane, even though, uh... You know, it's got these propellers and stuff under the water and some extra thrusters. I don't really blame that on the design of the old plane. I just think that's more of a Trailmaker's game limitation. You know, if I could have more powerful propellers, this might have worked, you know, without the, uh, without all the extra thrusters and engines as well. But then, of course, there's also the drag issue. When you get into the water, um, your drag just goes up so much. And this doesn't really float as high as the original plane would have. You know, the original boat plane would have floated a lot higher on the water, which of course would have been easier for it to skim the surface and take off. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know if there's other cool builds that you'd like to see. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.